This is Story Diffusion, and it claims to have solved consistent characters in AI image and video generation. It's been one of the biggest setbacks for image generation for quite some time, and honestly, by this little demo, it works pretty good. The character looks very consistent and very similar throughout all of the images. And like I said, yes, it does video as well, and the video is quite impressive. It's not exactly Sora quality, but it's pretty dang good, and you can see how consistent the character and the background as a whole is and clearly they used a Sora video as a reference for this but either way you could use any photo you want and it could turn it into a video theoretically. Now yes this is actually released as open source so theoretically you could run it at home and they also have an official demo on Hugging Face. I'm gonna be completely real with you guys I just spent about 15 minutes trying to get this demo to work changing all of the different settings and doing my best and I can't get this demo online to work for me at all. Doesn't matter what model model I use, if I'm using a reference image, the prompts, it's just erroring out for me. But I will go ahead and link it down below and hopefully you don't end up with errors like me and you can try this thing out. And by the way, if you do generate anything, please share it to my Discord server because I would love to see some of that character consistency. I don't know if you guys are aware, but the Matvid Pro AI Discord server is one of the best ones in town. If you are into AI, we definitely have a spot for you in our community. Regardless though guys, like I said, it is indeed open source so anything you make is under the Apache 2.0 license which means I'm pretty sure you can use it for commercial purposes if I'm not wrong but the code are under non-commercial purposes so you can't iterate off of this unfortunately for commercial purposes but you can generate for commercial purposes now the repo here looks pretty dang good they've got some more demos for us to explore this prompt was a comic related to the story of a spy in the jungle and his adventure in his tasks and a lot of these prompts guys keep in mind they are indeed translated to English from I believe Chinese so bear with me on that and I think all of this text was added in by the creator but the character at hand is very very consistent you can see his suit is super consistent his face is in the newspaper he reads that there's treasure so he leaves his house and gets in his car and drives finds a tiger in the woods he ran away from the tiger found a log cabin in the house and you can see he enters the log cabin but the character like it's just so consistent and then there's actually treasure inside of the house so it's a very short example story I think this one is a little bit more telling though you can see this is a comic related to the story of Lacoon and his exploration on the moon. You can see we actually use a reference image of a real person, I believe is the developer here. And yeah, turn him into this comic style and it definitely looks like that referenced character. He's at home in the morning eating his breakfast, he gets on the phone and he's told that he was invited to the moon, takes off in the jet, you can see now he's in the spacesuit, same exact face, very consistent. And not only that, the spacesuit here is very consistent as well. We've got the American patches on there, the helmet maybe changes a little bit, but we've got these blue pieces here on the spacesuit that are very consistent from panel to panel. And this is a huge step, in my opinion, towards consistent characters with AI image and video generation. And speaking of video generation, the generated video is pretty dang good. Check this out, guys. You can see we've got that Sora video that I showed you earlier, someone landing on a parachute here in a field. Not too shabby. Again, the trees look super consistent. The grass looks super consistent. The people look super consistent it's a good video generator it's competitive I mean in my opinion this is probably the first video generator that's actually maybe a little bit closer towards Sora than we've seen in the past like this beats Pika Labs in that consistency department I mean let me know if you agree or disagree we've got even more little demos for the video generation let's check this out yeah that looks pretty good his face changes a little bit but still yeah he's turning to the side there it's not bad it's really not bad like that's that's pretty dang impressive impressive and it's a long video okay how about this one we've got a guy just sort of turning around there's a little bit weirdness for sure but again man pretty consistent and we have access to this now it is open source i don't know i'm starting to think that maybe people were right when they were saying we could get sora quality ai video by the end of this year look at this we've got a little cartoon bear i mean it's not as animated as those sora demos for sure but it's not bad and he's pretty dang consistent across this whole demo and we've got more videos here like that's pretty cool i think she's supposed to be riding a bike oh yeah she is that's not too bad man wow i'm i am mighty impressed here this is a video wow that one looks pretty realistic look at that dude look at the facial expression that looks real man pretty shocking we 
we've got a little fish as well. It's good, man. It's good. It's just a lot better than I thought, man. Okay, we've got this one. This one's a little bit less consistent, but we've got a lot of flowers in the in the frame there, so it makes things a little bit more difficult. And we've got two people kissing underwater. That's pretty impressive with the, the hair floating in the water like that. It's pretty difficult to do. Some animation. Okay, the animation's very consistent as well. There's just a fundamental difference here in how the technology works that is for sure making all of this possible and that's must be it must be somewhat similar to what Sora possesses that that level of consistency that we just haven't seen before man it's it's pretty cool to see. It's pretty wild. <laughs> and obviously this is being updated. Not everything is done. Source code for video generation model isn't out yet. Comic generation source code is here though. And pre-trained weights of the video generation model are also coming soon. So stay up to date for those if you are a developer. Really dang cool though overall. I think you guys will agree. Now that's probably the coolest thing that I've seen recently in the AI space. But I do want to move on to some other really awesome things that I dug up. This I want to run so, so bad. This is a one-click launcher install for an AI town. So this will have individual little AI characters based on Llama 3 that interact with each other in this game-like format. I want to try it so bad, but it doesn't support Windows and I don't have Mac or Linux. So yeah, I'll link this down below, but Cocktail Peanut is the one who made this one-click launcher. It's by the team at A16Z, but it's basically like this little AI universe that can be ran locally on your own machine. It's almost like the first full-fledged AI first game in a way. It's very intriguing. My buddy Tim at Theoretically Media just did a full video on this, I believe, because he has a Mac, but I don't have Mac, so unfortunately we'll have to wait until this comes out for Windows. But you can see you start this thing up and you can just click any agent on the map to see what their chat history is, what they are up to at the moment in the town. Pete here is gardening and you can actually click on the characters and make them chat with each other and you can actually join in as your own character here and become a part of the conversation here and talk to the other AI characters in the town so it's really really quite an interesting little demo but I just love this idea because I feel like original RPGs from back in the day really would kill for something like this and now it's absolutely possible so I'd love to see this expanded into a real full game that someone could download on Steam etc and you'd have your own AI village that runs entirely locally with something like Llama 3 or four in the future. Cocktail Peanut goes into a great discussion as to why this is important. A project like this would be very expensive using a chat GPT API, for example, but running it entirely locally makes it dirt cheap. Essentially, the electricity cost is all you need to run it. And now that it's cheap, you can try all kinds of insane experiments and keep it for a really long time to see how the little character agents evolve over time and interact with each other. And again, Cocktail Peanut does emphasize that this is all all available just because Llama 3 has changed the large language model game, at least open source and locally. And I can agree. I mean, Llama 3 is amazing. I cannot wait until this actually opens up for Windows because I want to try it so bad for myself. And speaking of Llama 3, I had to show you this. Gradient AI has been in the kitchen cooking with Llama 3. They've actually been able to take the smallest Llama 3 model, which is the 8 billion parameter model that can feasibly run locally and give it a context length of 1 million tokens, which is crazy. I mean, GPT-4 Turbo has a context length of 128,000 tokens, so this is almost 10 times that. And this is all released completely free on Hugging Face. You can download them. You can even download quantized versions that apparently can run locally, and I did try to run them locally, guys. I gotta say, I didn't get too far. Doing something like half a million or a million token context requires an insane amount of VRAM and I don't know if I'm not running the right quantizations or the right settings but I couldn't get it to run locally in LM Studio correctly. I mean I got some stuff out of it but not enough to make a full video. You guys are welcome to give this a shot though. It is quite remarkable. You can see even in the needle in a haystack test it actually apparently does really really well up until the 900,000 token mark or so. It's really really quite solid and it's it's shocking that we could take Llama 3 and take it to a, a million 
and token context, just like that. Not even an issue. I mean, long context is absolutely coming. You can even see this nice curve for context size and how we're really treading to infinite context in the future. The era of long context models, I think we can say is almost officially here. We're right on the edge of that. And the reason long context is so dang important is quite simple. This really opens the doors for lots of projects that were not possible before. If you can convert it into text, then feasibly the large language model can manipulate it, right? And a lot of things can be converted into text. Take a video, for example. With long context, feasibly we could do fully AI generated video editing. All we have to do is convert our video into an XML format, which will split the video up theoretically into a bunch of clips that's already possible. And then we do an AI generated transcript on top of that with timestamps for each moment, send it into the AI and theoretically it could just generate a new XML file, which is a lot of tokens. I mean, this is a ton of tokens, right? But that's why we need the long context and you could generate an, a working XML file that's already fully edited and you plop that in. You have an edited video by AI. Pretty insane. So it's projects like that big text conversions that are really going to be changing the game with large language models. Hopefully this year. I think this year could be the year of the long context large language model. So now I want to move on to some open AI news. Alpha Signal AI tweets here that OpenAI is about to go after Google search. OpenAI's SSL certificate logs show they created search.chatgpt.com. So could this be an AI powered search bot? Something that's competitive with perplexity and of course Google. That's what people are thinking. And not to mention the man himself, Jimmy Apples, who's known to have pretty good leaks and information on OpenAI, says that the 9th of May there will be an OpenAI event apparently. Not a model release, but search engine announcement. And this was actually posted before search.chatgpt.com was certified. And a really good point, Jimmy, here. I guess they can't help themselves but to upstage Google. IO. Very interesting stuff. Now, GitHub is also making some pretty serious moves here in the AI space. They just dropped something called GitHub Copilot Workspace, and this is essentially a way for you to build with GitHub using natural language and the ideation, the code, the demo, it's all going to be created for you. Now, this isn't exactly out for everyone yet. You have to sign up for this, but it's something that they are working on and eventually will be released as a consumer product. I mean, we can can see by this user interface already that we have the ability to basically tell the AI what we want the game to do and how we want it to work and then it opens it as its own separate issue with the specification and then questions itself on the ways to fix it. So it's like an agent that can actually plan things out and build things in real time. We'll have to see how well it actually would work in practice. I've been pretty skeptical about stuff like this as of lately. The coding is usually where it can fall flat. Again, context length is a part of that. But here, theoretically, it makes a pretty decent little Pong game. Obviously, though, for this to be meaningful, we need to make a lot more than just Pong. Either way, it's on a waitlist, so I'll have this linked down below. And thank you very much to Min Choi for bringing this to my attention. So next up, I do want to do a little bit of an Udio AI update. Apparently, it's called Udio, and Matt Wolf told me this after speaking with the people who created Udio. I'm still going to call it Udio, though, because I like that better. Anyways, Udio has been releasing little incremental updates, which surprised me. I thought they were just going to sit on what they had for quite some time, but they're kind of really on a fast paced track record. Extensions now use a context window of up to two minutes. So before when you created a song, you would do like 30 seconds of generation. And then the next 30 seconds of an extension that you could generate were based on the previous 30 seconds. And if you did a bunch of those extensions, you could have like a two minute song. But the next extension you would do was only based on the past 30 seconds of the song. But they've increased this context window to two minutes, which means that you can create create much, much more coherent songs over time, which is really nice. I'll have to try this out for myself at some point here soon. I might do a live stream next week of us generating some audio music. Let me know if that's something you'd want to see. Yeah, basically verse and chorus structures are going to be way, way more consistent. And they do have a little example. It's about three minutes. I think we should take a listen. Anywhere you want to go, anything you need to know, all the best in life, I want to get it for you. 
Baby, I just feel so fine. I imagine that you're mine. You're my world, you're gold. I only want to protect you. Whatever I want, I get. I want shooting stars. Whatever I need, I have. When I'm with you, follow me inside, outside, through the stratosphere. The moon is shining for you. It knows that I adore you. Suddenly, all the sadness will just slip. You can see as it passed 60 seconds, things changed up back to the, where they were in the beginning of the song, and that would not happen before with Udio AI, so I'm definitely gonna have to give this a shot. Pretty interesting. So now you can also extend tracks up to a maximum of 15 minutes, which is ridiculous. I mean, I, I'm not gonna make any 15-minute songs, but it's cool to see that that's possible. And, you know, obviously, longer mixes, ambient tracks, uh, rock epics. They're also doing now a tree-based track history that will help you stay more organized as you create extensions. That's good to see because that used to get pretty confusing when I was generating my songs. And they added the ability to select a section of your track to trim before you perform an extension. Okay, good. Finally, they have this as well. So this was a big one that people kept asking for, the ability to trim it. Look at that user interface. That's really nice. Good work. Every user gets 200 credits so they can check out the new features. Nice, man. Good work, guys. That is, that's a really nice impressive update only a few weeks after they launched. I am liking that. This is something I'm going to be excited to test out. And again guys, I think I might do it in a live stream, so let me know if you want to be there for that next week. And finally, I just wanted to mention this it's not really AI, but people are getting access to this thing called Simulon, and I just think it's so darn cool. It essentially lets you do really, really high quality VFX right inside of your phone and it's a very simple process. All you have to do is create a new scene and then you essentially scan the room that you're in with your phone and it will detect the lighting and build some sort of a sphere that gets captured. And then it uses the LiDAR scanner to add the environment here. And then you can add different characters in and those characters get recorded in this pre-rendered version. And then eventually they just get rendered out into a full scale thing that looks very, very much realistic. I mean, look at those shadows. Kind of insane when you think about it. I really want to get access to this thing and I am on the wait list, but no access for me yet I just wanted to mention this because I thought it was so dang cool I mean, I would have loved to have this when I was younger really I used to use those really cruddy uh, Old VFX apps to make little things little movies and put them on YouTube so if I had something like this, I would have just went hog wild. But yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this was a nice little AI news update for you. This was everything that I found that was really sticking with me and hitting home. There were some other little bits and bobs, but this was the most important that I found. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Again, let me know about that audio stream and check out the Discord server. Goodbye.